All right, so let me walk you through a couple of steps on how to get that nice finish on your set of cornhole board tops with some stain, okay? Um, you're gonna need to gather your materials first, and so the first thing you're gonna need is to get a stain color that you like. Walk into your local home center, look at the stain colors, see which colors you like, and bring it on back home. You're going to need to have something to put the stain on with. That could be a foam brush, it could be a sponge that you could just cut up into pieces, or it can be a nice clean rag uh, or a shirt or something that you can throw away later. Some other things that are kind of nice to have are some gloves to protect your hands so you don't get stained on your fingers, and you need something to stir the stain with, okay? Later on, um, you're going to need something to put over the top of your stain, like a urethane or a polyurethane to seal the stain in and to give it a nice slick finish, so you'll need some sort of top coat. And then, um, depending on the species of wood that you're staining, it might be beneficial to have a pre-stained conditioner. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, as long as why would you choose a gel stain versus a regular stain? We'll cover that in just a minute also. All right, so in front of me, I have a Baltic birch plywood cornhole board top, okay? Baltic birch is a nice piece of uh, plywood it has um, 13 layers, it's 18 millimeters thick, it is regulation, it is a nice piece of plywood to take a stain, okay? So the first step in what you will do is you need to grab some sort of sandpaper, sanding block. Uh, this is a 150 grit, which is fine for what we're doing. You don't need to go real excessive um, on the sanding when you first start. You, if you sand too much, you can make the pores of the wood close up so they won't accept the stain. Stain works because it changes the color of the wood and it seeps down into the actual wood itself. As opposed to paint goes across the top of the wood, stain goes down into the wood. And if you stain too heavily, then you can kind of seal off the wood from accepting stain. So you don't want to really sand more than 150, 180 grit on this particular project. So the first thing you'll do is, is you'll get your items, you can go ahead and set them out and get ready to go. Um, take your top, figure out which side you want to do, uh, you know, which is the prettiest side. And I'm going to go ahead and choose this side. And I'm just going to give it a light back and forth sand to clean off any leftover uh, little nibs or things. And I'll go around the edge too. And I'll just give it a quick little run through. just like that. Now get the other side too. Um, there's really no reason other than personal preference to stain the bottom of the board. Um, you can if you want, you just repeat the process over here also. Okay. Now, this board is ready to be stained. Now this is Baltic birch. If you choose to go with a pine, which a lot of home centers sell as a common um, as a common type of material, this is pine, this is birch. You'll do the same thing, you'll hit this with the, with the sandpaper, okay? But what you're gonna do here is that pine has oils and tannins inside the material that over time will creep out. And so if you don't treat the pine over time, you, your, your finish may change how it looks. It doesn't change how it affects the play. It doesn't change anything other than appearance. So it's a personal preference. If you don't want that oils coming up and making kind of a, a splotchy look, then you would first apply a what's called a pre-stain conditioner. You open the can, you give it a good shake, open the can, follow directions, usually a foam brush, and just apply it back and forth on each top. Let it sit for roughly 20 minutes and then come back and you are ready to stain. So if you are w uh, working with pine, you want to go with a pre-stain conditioner. If you're working with Baltic birch, don't need to worry about it. All right, so we're going to stain the birch top today. Okay, so we have our birch top, okay? And for this particular one, we're going with uh, provincial is the color that we're going with, okay? 
Now, a lot of people grab the can, they give it a good shake like this, they pop the can open, and then they start going. Not a good move. Stain is meant to be stirred, not shaken. So when you open it, all the, if this can's been setting, all the dye will be down in the bottom here, okay? And you want to stir it around. If you shake the can, you're going to make bubbles. And when you put your brush in here, you're gonna transfer those bubbles onto your paper, or onto your um, top, and you're gonna have these little bubbles everywhere, and it will drive you nuts. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to open the can and stir it, okay? All right, I'm interrupting the video because I gotta ask you something real quick. Could you please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button, or at least leave a comment for me in the comment box. We make these videos here at the shop. We love doing it. It's something that we enjoy, but we need you to do your part and All just right. give now, us a thumbs up right now. When you stain, easy. nice, easy strokes. Uh, dip your brush in. And just like that. All right, so one layer of stain, let it soak in, let it dry, find a spot where it can dry out of the sun, um, and then come back, uh, give it a light sanding, okay? So you're gonna let this one dry, come back later, give it a light sanding with the same grit that you used before, uh, put on your second coat, let that dry, and then you'll finally put on, as a last step, you'll put on your, um, you will put on your top sealant coat, which would be a urethane or a, or a polyurethane, and that would finish things up. So sand the top real quick, um, put on your nice even strokes of uh, stain, unless you're using the pine boards, and you'll do that pre-stain, and then you'll put on your stain. Um, let it dry, come back later, give it a light sanding, put on your second coat, let it dry, then come back later. You don't need to sand after the second coat, Put on your nice top sealant of polyurethane and you are ready to go. So if you have questions, let me know. I'll be glad to help you out. Um, we appreciate it and have a good day.